there are 39 days left until we will know who has been elected the 47th president of the United States. We'll also know if Mark Robinson, the black Nazi with a fetish for nude Africa and all of the porn sites, becomes chief executive of the state of North Carolina, not like Trump knows him or anything. This is the warning. The man he called Martin Luther King on steroids has suddenly become, well, akin to an apparition. Are you going to pull your endorsement of Mark Robinson? Uh, I don't know the situation. How can it be that Donald Trump knows nothing about Mr. Nude Africa, the black Nazi? Like Sergeant Schultz, I know nothing, I see nothing, I hear nothing, but has somehow been able to ferret out every detail about the top secret program where the migrants coming to America, yes, the very same ones who can't figure out how to use the kiosk at a McDonald's and are forced to eat the pets of the God-faring decent white people of Springfield, Ohio. Yes, those Haitian migrants, they have a button on their phones that's connected directly to Kamala Harris. They press the button and they're released into the interior of the country. I think it sounds better when Trump talks about it. Kamala created a brand new program to fly in migrants from Venezuela, Haiti, and Nicaragua, and resettle them in American communities, including small towns all across our nation, but in particular in Pennsylvania, Ohio, Wisconsin, and North Carolina, nobody can believe it. These towns have been destroyed, and the mayors of the towns and the governors of the states can't talk about it because they're embarrassed that they allowed it to happen. In addition, through her phone app, something totally new now, it's a phone app for migrants, where migrants call in, highly sophisticated migrants, She's allowed virtually unlimited numbers of illegals to press a button, schedule their illegal immigration appointment at our ports of entry, and show up to be released into the interior of our country. Can anybody believe this? It's all complete and total f***ing nonsense. But let's take it apart. Kamala created a brand new program to fly in migrants from Venezuela, Haiti, and Nicaragua, and resettle them in American communities, including small towns all across our nation, but in particular in Pennsylvania, Ohio, Wisconsin, and North Carolina. Nobody can believe it. What a coincidence it is that all of the migrants on the secret program on the non-existent airline are arriving in the only states that can add up together to give Trump the presidency. I mean, what a coincidence. One of the most amazing aspects of the entire Trump presidency is the astounding amount of Americans who believe this nonsense that Trump is spouting, that believe, for example, that Portland looks like Nagasaki, that San Francisco looks like Hiroshima, that Springfield, Ohio looks like Dresden in 1945, that across America, the small towns have been ravaged, burned, destroyed. Think about it. You have somebody who's telling you that these towns have been utterly destroyed. There are hundreds of reporters that follow him around his every word, but literally there'll be like five of them who actually go to any of these towns to report on what's actually happening there, which is none of the things that Donald Trump is saying. This is the only thing that Trump sells, fear, wrapped in nonsense, boxed in delusions. All of it is utter insanity. And the truth of the matter is, it's packaged for the dumbest and the least informed amongst us in a nation of 340 million people. That's who is susceptible to this idiocy. But let's keep going. In addition, through her phone app, something totally new now, it's a phone app for migrants, where migrants call in, highly sophisticated migrants. 
She's allowed virtually unlimited numbers of illegals to press a button, schedule their illegal immigration appointment at our ports of entry, and show up to be released into the interior of our country. Can anybody believe this? The crisis in America, more than anything else, is we have scores of tens of millions of people after 10 years of this, and because of the brokenness of America's political media, believe it, they'll believe anything. The greatest source of misinformation isn't from hostile foreign powers. It's not the disinformation that the MAGA conspiracy theorists rant and rave about. It's the lies that come out of the mouth of the most prolific liar in all of American history. The convicted felon, the adjudicated rapist, the Donald. Here's the warning. Trump's lies will increase. They'll become more sensational. They'll become more unbelievable by the hour, by the day, as we move forward. Until it all culminates on election night, when it's clear that Kamala Harris has been elected the 47th president. And then the first droplet of lies will start. This will be the cleanest, fairest election that has ever taken place in American history. It will be more fair than the previous fairest and cleanest election in American history, which was the 2020 election. Remember, there has never been any substantial evidence of voter fraud or any of the things that Donald Trump has alleged. I have sat and lived through the experience of both a winning presidential campaign and a losing presidential campaign. I remember clearly an hour or so after it was plainly evident that John McCain would not be elected president when I said to him, I think it's time to start thinking about placing the phone call to Senator Obama. In that moment, Senator Obama was in the midst of a profound transformation. He was a young senator from Illinois, the nominee of the Democratic primary, on the edge of metamorphosis, about to become the president-elect of the United States of America. I placed the phone call for John McCain to David Plouffe, the first person who truly mattered, who addressed Barack Obama as Mr. President-elect, wasn't his staff. It wasn't the family member celebrating. It was the man he defeated, John McCain. That is how American democracy is renewed. It is the magic, the idea that in this competition for political power, that one side yields to the other, allowing the sovereign of the country, the people, to decide. Government of the people, by the people, for the people cannot survive if a demagogic leader decides he wants power more than he wants the people to be free to decide who gets that power. It is the cornerstone of our society. It is the foundation of the American way of life. And it's under threat by lies, by demagoguery, by insanity, by corruption, by cruelty, and by a racial animus by a faith that says, you're my enemy if you will not yield to my ambitions. And when I get power, I'm coming to punish you, to seek retribution. And understand something, Trump is surrounded by weirdos and criminals, by people who share an affinity for animal cruelty. The man who is the architect and author of Project 2025, talk to his colleagues about killing his neighbor's dog, bludgeoning it to death with a shovel. The cruelty that we keep seeing manifested through word, through deed, through question. Stephen Miller wanting to know, can the Navy sink and kill migrants off the coast of San Diego? These people over and over and over again have intimated that violence is good if it helps them take power, that killing is justified if it helps them maintain political power. We're crossing into a space where the crazy words and the crazy ideas and the statements have the potential to be actualized by people who get power and move quickly and have a plan to utilize it. Trump understands what the presidency is now. And thanks to Chief Justice John Roberts, 
Trump has a blank check to do as he pleases. Everybody should understand that the danger is close in, very present, and absolutely at hand. 39 days from now, we have a big decision to make as a country. There are a lot of indifferent people in the country, a lot of fearful people in the country. Some of them are supposed leaders, men like Mitt Romney, afraid of their own shadows, terrified of Donald Trump. And now it's up to all of us, the American people, to end this idiocy once and for all so that the country can move forward and draw closer again to the ideal laid out a long time ago and celebrated by presidents of both parties, the shining city on a hill first seen so long ago by John Winthrop and the pilgrims at Plymouth Rock. These people aren't figments of our imagination. They were real, and they came, and they did something extraordinary. And on the layers and foundations of their achievements, a great society was built. A great culture was created. And now we must decide again whether we renew it or we end it. And that has always been the choice on the table in an American presidential election. And in this one, that choice is as acute as it has ever been. Donald Trump is unfit. Donald Trump is dangerous. Donald Trump is a fascist. And catastrophe is at hand if he takes political power along with his cast and legion of little likemans. This is The Morning. 39 days to go. I'm Steve Schmidt. This is The Morning. And I invite you to join, subscribe on our Substack, on our YouTube channel. Follow us. Welcome to the community.